Hey everybody, welcome back. My name is Annie Elise and this is Tend to Life where we are talking all things true crime. Now I wasn't going to jump on here today. I wasn't even going to make a video about this, but let me adjust my light here because it's a little crazy. I wasn't even going to make a video about this because so many people are still talking about Gabby Petito, Brian Laundrie, and I get that the lawsuit is now going into court, but I wasn't even going to come on here. But Brian Laundrie's notebook has been released now, according to Fox News, and they have posted images of it where you can see the water damage, you can see the writing in it, and I read it in its entirety, and I call bullshit on the entire thing. I think that his reasoning in this letter to Gabby and letter to whoever finds it is all a lie. I think that he wrote this fictitious story and version of events in this letter as to appear to be the martyr, that he selflessly saved Gabby, and that's what he was trying to do, that that's how she got the injury on her head, because she fell, and then she was in pain, and he was trying to help her like a wounded animal almost, and I just call BS on the entire thing. And that's why I came on here, because it's really pissing me off. And you know what? I printed this, I printed out the actual text of the letter, because, you know, there's so many different pages in here, and with the ink, it's a little hard to read. So I'm going to read this letter for you as I show it to you on the screen as well. Gabby, I wish I was right at your side. I wish I could be talking to you right now. I'd be going through every memory we've made, getting even more excited for the future. I can't live without you. I've lost every day we could have spent together, every holiday. I'll never get to play with, and then you can't really understand what he's saying, again. Never go hiking with TJ. I loved you more than anything. I can't bear to look at our photos, to recall great times, because it is why I cannot go on. When I close my eyes, I will think of laying on the roof of the van, falling asleep to the sight of a meteor shower at the Crystal Geyser. I will always love you. If you were reading Gab's journal, looking at the photos from our life together, flipping through old cards, you wouldn't want to live a day without her. Knowing that every day you'll wake up without her, you wouldn't want to wake up. I'm sorry to everyone this will affect. Gabby was the love of my life, but I know adored by many. I'm so very sorry to her family because I love them. I'd consider her younger siblings my best of friends. I'm sorry to my family. This is a shock to them as well as a terrible grief. And I just want to mention here something that stuck out to me, and it does again while I'm reading this, is he says that he's very sorry to her family because I love them, present tense. Yet earlier in the letter, when he says, I will always love you, and he's talking about everything. He said, I loved Gabby so much. Past tense. I don't know. Something just doesn't sit right with me there. Wouldn't he say, I love you so much? You know? I don't know. They loved as much, if not more than me. A new daughter to my mother, an aunt to my nephews. Please do not make this harder for them. This occurred as an unexpected tragedy. Rushing back to our car, trying to cross the streams of Spread Creek before it got too dark to see too cold. I hear a splash and a scream. I could barely see. I couldn't find her for a moment. Shouted her name. I found her breathing heavily, gasping my name. She was freezing cold. We had just come from the blazing hot national parks in Utah. The temperature had dropped to freezing and she was soaking wet. I carried her for as far as I could down the stream towards the car, stumbling, exhausted in shock. When my knees buckled, and knew I couldn't safely carry her. I started a fire and spooned her as close to the heat as I could. She was so thin, had already been freezing too long. I couldn't at the time realize that I should have started a fire first, but I wanted her out of the cold back to the car. From where I started the fire, I had no idea how far the car might be. Now this whole thing, first of all, where he's explaining this, and sorry, I know I'm interrupting, but I needed to say this. It's like he's trying to write a novel here. The details that he has, I hear a splash, I hear a scream, I couldn't, he, I couldn't see and I couldn't find her for a moment. Like, give me a break right now. So he goes on and says, I only knew that the car was across the creek. When I pulled Gabby out of the water, she couldn't tell me what hurt. She had a small bump on her forehead that eventually got larger. I feel, in my opinion, this is where he's trying to explain away the blunt force trauma piece of it. 
Her feet hurt, her wrist hurt, but she was freezing, shaking violently. While carrying her, she continually made sounds of pain. Laying next to her, she said little lapsing between violent shakes, gasping in pain, begging for an end to her pain. She would fall asleep and I would shake her awake, fearing she shouldn't close her eyes if she had a concussion. She would wake in pain, start the whole painful cycle again, while furious that I was the one waking her. She wouldn't let me try to cross the creek, thought that thought like me that this fire would go out in her sleep, and she'd freeze. I don't know the extent of Gabby's injuries, only that she was in extreme pain. I ended her life. I thought it was merciful, that it was what she wanted, but I see now all the mistakes I made. I panicked. I was in shock. But from the moment I decided took her pain away I knew I couldn't go on without her now it's so interesting to me too that he's talking so much about what led up to him killing her and how much in pain she was and how he just wanted to save her like a little wounded animal but he doesn't talk about how he took her life or any details of that he just glosses right over that because he's not trying to address what he did and his actions he's trying to make an excuse for the why he did it which is why he's spending so much time elaborating on that piece of it he goes on to say i rushed home to spend any time i had left with my family i wanted to drive north and let james or tj kill me but i wouldn't want them to spend time in jail over my mistake even though i'm sure they would have liked to I'm ending my life not because of fear of punishment, but rather because I can't stand to live another day without her. I've lost our whole future together, every moment we could have cherished. I'm sorry for everyone's loss. Please do not make my life, oh, sorry, please do not make life harder for my family. They lost a son and a daughter. The most wonderful girl in the world. Gabby, I'm sorry. I have killed myself by this creek in the hopes that animals may tear me apart, that it may make some of her family happy. Please pick up all of my things. Gabby hated people who litter. Guys, I just can not. This is the biggest piece of crazy town I have ever heard. He's just so conveniently not addressing that when he went home, he confided in his family what had happened. He's not conveniently explaining how he took her life. He's, in my opinion, trying to illustrate in a novel form with all of these descriptors how he is somehow a martyr and how he did this selfless act of love for Gabby because he loves her so much he hated to see her in pain. And while he's explaining all of this and like this grandiose gesture of his, he also is in the next breath explaining away how she had bumps on her head, why her wrist was injured, saying that she fell in the creek. And look, I'm sure it gets cold over there. I'm thinking in Utah, I live in California, in Utah, when did this happen? September, but it was August. I don't think it's getting that cold. Maybe if you're soaking wet, yeah, and cold at night, but like, and oh, well, I guess they were in Wisconsin or Wyoming at this point. I don't know. I'm not buying it. I am not buying any of it. And I just can't believe the absolute nerve of this little a-hole. As if I didn't already hate this guy enough. It's like, come on here. This is just beyond. I don't know, guys. I'm curious to know what you think. Do you think this is real? Do you think this is the truth? And do you think this is what happened? Or do you believe that this is just his half-ass excuse and attempt to try to absolve himself of any guilt, to try to save his family? You know, now that I think about it, because he doesn't even talk about how he confided in his family, maybe he did rush home to spend time with his family. And when they went on that family camping trip, maybe his family helped him concoct this bogus A story. Because this is just literally bananas. Again, saying these things, she fell in the creek. She was gasping my name. I found her breathing heavily. I I heard a splash, then a scream. I'm sorry, if you are tormented and distraught and you are writing your last note to people to find and explaining how you just literally murdered the love of your life i don't think you'd be so eloquently spoken or trying to be an author i don't know guys i'm just pissed this really rubs me the wrong way what do you think do you think this is real or do you think this is fake and not fake as far as this isn't the note This was his notebook, but I'm saying, do you think his version of events are real or fake? I also am curious 
hoping this lawsuit does go to trial? Do they have proof that Roberta and the father did in fact know what had happened to Gabby? Because then does that also mean that they had any part of creating this disgusting piece of justification as to why he did what he did? It's all bad. It is all bad, guys. I'll let you know if I hear more, but I'm really curious to know your thoughts. So sound off in the comments below. All right, guys, we will talk soon. And, you know, have a great weekend, everybody, to everybody except Brian Laundry's family. Brian Laundry, who is rotting down below, in my opinion. And I'm just pissed, guys. I am pissed. All right, I'll talk to you guys soon. Have a good one. Bye.